All right, what's up everyone? It's Justin from Long Beach Mushrooms. Man, I've been trying to shoot this video for so long and things keep happening. Um, keep getting interrupted or whatever, but uh, I should be able to finish it today, hopefully. So I wanted to make a video. I just did a consultation with a mushroom farmer. Um, they came to my building and you know we just talked and chatted and I tried to troubleshoot what's, you know, what their bottlenecks are, what's going on and how can I help. Uh, we landed on the topic of contamination. And this was where they really, really wanted to get a different perspective on how to approach it because they had multiple consultants come in. Uh, those consultants all told them how to, like what equipment to buy, how to do whatever, set up their operations. And they listened to these, you know, they listened to these consultants to a T and did exactly what they told them to do. And when they tried to grow their first run, all of it contaminated. Like they showed me a picture of just a truck hauling away all the contaminated, um, all the contaminated substrate. So, you know, once we landed on that topic of contamination, I started asking, well, what's going on? Like, what's the process? Talk to me so I can figure this out. And really what I saw happening was they were relying really heavily on technology. Um, these consultants kept telling them to buy like better and better filters. And they got to the point where they felt like they were chasing a ghost because they did not know what was going on. They did not how to know how to figure out where this was coming from. And, you know, funny, but also sad, it got to the point where they were so lost on where their contamination was coming from. The consultant started blaming this one particular coworker who wasn't showering. And they said because he smelled like body odor and because that meant he didn't shower and that means he's the one contaminating all their all their bags i blew my mind away like i could not believe that it got that bad and they were that lost on contamination so i thought well if they have that problem and you know i was able to help maybe some of y'all you know can use just how I do things. And it's not necessarily, I'm not, I never would claim that this is the best way to do it or, or anything like that, but it's a process that has worked for me and has allowed me to, you know, build my business up to where it is. So I just thought I'd share. Um, there's two things really that I really hone in on. You know, I'm at a contamination rate of about uh, 5%. And there's two key factors in that. Number one is temperature control. Uh, you know, my incubation room is not huge. It's about 900 square feet, but you know, I have airflow in here. I have a designated air conditioner. Um, these walls are double insulated. Like this room is pretty steady. The temperature is very, very steady. And I found that, you know, once you start creeping up in temperature, especially when you have a room as full as mine, uh, once you start creeping up in temperature, it really, really affects your bags and, and how they get contaminated. So rule number one or tip number one for that is make sure you have really good temperature control. Um, honestly, sub 75, I would really even, I even keep, I keep mine at 70. So things do grow in maybe a little bit slower than some people would like, but my contamination rates are under 5%. And I have found that that's way more important than worrying about the extra couple days or whatever it takes to colonize. So number one, uh, definitely get temperature control. Now, number two is something that's more in your control. And I'm gonna tell you what I do every day to limit my contamination. And that's, you have, to, you have to know your mushrooms and what you do. So I'm just gonna walk you through my process. The first thing I do when I walk into my farm is I walk my incubation room. So I'm just gonna walk and check all the bags are on the shelves. And I'm paying attention to really quickly any ins inconsistent growth, you know, any outright contamination like trichoderma will, you know, blaringly be green and all that. So I'm looking for inconsistent growth, stalled out growth, um, any signs of, any apparent signs of contamination like trichoderma, like green um, or, you know, whatever, any black mold, any cobweb mold. I'm just looking lipstick mold, like I'm just checking. So I'm walking my room and I'm looking for contamination or if it's there or not, and I'm checking all my bags. So everything looks pretty good. My room's in, is, circ, like is it, it's in a cir circle, I guess. I, it's not in a circle, but it's in like a round table. So, you know, newer bags are in a certain area, oldest bags are in a certain area, and I can walk through and look. 
everything looks really clean so far. Um, and then I finally get to this shelf and, you know, right away you see gold, 3.6, contaminated. Um, the first thing I do is once I find a contaminated bag, I look at the tag, gold 3.6. The first thing I do is look for all the gold 36s because that's going to give me a story. So I can already see some gold 36s on the top shelf that are also contaminated the exact same way. Um, so that tells me that run was bad. The next thing I do is I look at all the other 36s. Um, there's some Lion's Mane on this Lion's Mane 36 on this shelf that looks great. There's some Piapino 36 on this shelf that looks great. So now I know, okay, it's not my, it's, it wasn't when I pasteurized my substrate because if, I, if, it, if the contamination came in because I pasteurized my substrate incorrectly, then all of these three six bags would be bad. So now I've isolated to gold three six is bad. My gold spawn, I mean my gold, whatever, gold spawn, gold culture is probably bad. So the first thing I do once I've isolated gold three six bad is I go to my, my spawn bags. Um, in, in, they're in the incubation room too. So I'll go to my spawn bags and I'll look for the golds. Um, once I find the gold spawn, I'll break it up. I'll break it up and as I'm breaking it up, I'm looking for any contaminants that are in that gold spawn bag. Um, I'm also looking you know, for possible bacteria or whatever. I'm just, I'm just checking the bag to see if the growth is consistent or not. Um, I already did this. I should have saved it for the video, but I already did this. I took all of my gold spawn I checked it and they looked bacterial. So I took it all and I chucked it. I threw it all away. So now I don't have any more gold spawn on my racks. Next step after that is I go into my lab and I'm gonna check my gold culture. Um, I'll pull my liquid culture that's in production off the shelf. I'm gonna quickly give the, the jar a once over and it doesn't look bad. Now I'm gonna pull a syringe test it on the agar plate and see what happens. I'm gonna let you know that I already tested uh, my gold on the agar plate and that culture back there is clean. So now I've pinpointed where things went wrong. It's not the culture. It wasn't the, the pasteurization, um, the substrate pasteurization. It wasn't during inoculation because then, you know, typically if it's during inoculation, not all 20 would be bad. Um, so I pinpointed it down to my grain spawn my gold grain spawn was bad. And that could be a very, you know, there could be many reasons for that. You can get into a rabbit hole for that. I prefer to just chuck it all and start over. I would guess I probably either didn't cook it to temp or they were overhydrated and that allowed for bacteria to breed. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't really care. I want to troubleshoot the situation quickly and I want to fix it quickly. So really quickly went through my really quickly went through my incubation room, found the contamination, isolated on when it possibly could happen. Um, and again, you do that by checking your tags, um, troubleshooting whether, you know, are all of my, uh, did all, if everything on that, everything done on 3.6 was bad, that usually tells me it's my pasteurization that failed. If only one variety, so I do uh, runs of 20, so if only one variety, which is the case, one strain was bad, that tells me it was the grain spawn. And then once I get back to the grain spawn, I can take it one step further and check my culture. Um, that, that process takes me, you know, once I spot the contamination in my room, it takes me 10 minutes to correct or troubleshoot. And then now it's about correcting. So the bad part is I won't have any gold mushrooms for a little while. The good news is I troubleshoot it really quickly I only lost 20 bags and I'm not going to use that grain spawn any further. My culture is clean, so I'm going to continue using it. Now, I, I will continue to check that culture because, you know, there's things that you can't, sometimes it's hard to spot. So if, you know, I'll do one run with that culture. If it's good, then I'll roll it out. If it's bad, then I'm going to reset that culture. This is how we mitigate our contamination to 5%. And I think it is an art. It is something that, you know, I've learned over time. Um, it's not an incredibly, I don't know, uh, difficult is the wrong word. It's not an uh, incredibly intricate skill to learn, but just, I don't know, just like talking to people who have been consulted with and, and other mushroom growers, 
I think we lean, sometimes we lean too heavy on relying on equipment. Uh, we lean too heavy on, well, we swing too far with contamination and we think it's some sort of ghost. Like, you know, we always think it's because we sneeze or because people aren't showering or because we're not wearing lab coats or whatever the case may be. And for the most part, like if you watched my team inoculate, some of you would probably like not even, like it would probably, it would, it would probably, I don't know, turn like just get some of you upset because they're in there with music on. They are talking to each other. Uh, sometimes they're watching TV shows. They are not wearing anything special. Um, a lot of sometimes they'll even, you know, they're not they're not wearing lab coats. Um, yeah, and and we have five percent contamination rate. And how we do it, like I said, are those two reasons: T uh, really good temperature control, and number two, uh, a system on how to troubleshoot our bags very quickly and how to fix that problem very quickly. Uh, you know, that's my advice to y'all. Um, mushroom farming is a science, but it's also not, I don't know, it's not as labby as, labby? Is that a word? Labby as some of us would like to make it, make it out to be. Um, that's just, that's just, that's my own lived experience. Um, my lab, like people, other mushroom farmers have come into my operation and they've laughed because they look at it and they go, this is it? This is all you have? This is like, where's the, I don't know, where's your, where's your air filtration coming from? Blah, blah, I don't know, just, they just roll in and they laugh because they, they see how low tech it is. But low tech combined with experiential learning skills, experience, experience skills, um, learned skills, and a tight system to troubleshoot quickly you know, we grow seven to 900 pounds a week, no problem. 5% contamination rate, no problem. We make 480 12 pound bags a week. And a lot of times we don't lose any bags. You know, it, it does lull and spike. Like sometimes there's things that go wrong and we have to, you know, there, there's a few factors that happen and we'll have a spike in contamination, but it's never, it's hardly ever like anything that's gonna ruin us. It's usually one run, at the worst, it's a, it's at the, you know, sometimes it's only 20 bags. At the very worst, it's 60 bags. So no, I'll take that back. It, at the very worst is 120 bags, but 120 bags has happened. Actually, I can't even remember if it has ever happened. I would imagine it might've happened once, but it hasn't happened since, you know, very much since we've, you know, since we, since the beginning of when we started. Anyways, I'm rambling a little bit. Really, the tip here is Contamination is not a boogeyman. If you have the systems in place to troubleshoot and check things quickly and correct things quickly, you're gonna have a low contamination rate. Um, and of course, temperature control is a big one. So you have to have some basic infrastructure. I hope this helps some of y'all. Again, my goal is for there to be a, you know, what I would love to see is that there's a mushroom farm in every city. Um, you know, I'd love to help y'all out if you need it. Uh, reach out to us, we do consultations. We also do just free five minute on the phone conversations uh, to see if you're interested in the consultation or not. So, you know, I'm be more than happy to schedule that with you. But yeah, just, just kind of know that, you know, there are skills to learn in this and you can't always rely on just equipment. But, you know, that's my, that's the video for today. Hope y'all doing all right out there and peace.